Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my Tyrannis to use with my quadcopters. I've had lots of questions about how I set up my Tyrannis. In my other videos I've covered how to configure your transmitter to create a new model, bind the receiver and set up the basic arm and flight mode switches. So I'm going to explain how to set up some of the other useful features, timers and logical switches, which will give you some really useful feedback and warnings. So here's how I set up my Tyrannus. This is very much a personal preference, but it's what works for me, and others will have their own way of doing things. As always, listen to all the advice, and make up your own mind as to what works best for you. I've seen some very complex switch interlocks for arming your quad. This is fine, but for me it's an unnecessary complication and I think it's best to keep the arm switch the same for every quad that you fly. That way your muscle memory will quickly develop so you don't accidentally disarm or use the wrong switch. I like to use switch SC, disarmed. which is far enough away from the other switches that I won't accidentally use it in flight and it's easy enough to get to. When you crash or land unexpectedly, or you simply need to get the quad down, you need to get to that disarm switch quickly. Having a complex sequence of switches to disarm just won't work, it's too slow. When you turn the Tyrannus on, it will warn you if any switch isn't in the safe up and back position. You can turn this feature on and off, but actually I quite like it. Let's turn the transmitter on. Welcome to OpenTX, switch warning. And it's telling me that a couple of the switches are in the forward position, which isn't safe. Disarmed. 4.0 flight mode angle. I use switch SE as my flight mode switch. In its back position, that is in angle mode. Flight mode horizon. The middle position is horizon. Flight mode acro. The forward position is acro. Flight mode angle. The arm switch has to be up and back disarmed. to be disarmed. I set the default flight mode to be angle and the arm switch to be disarmed, which I think is a good safe set of initial values. I mostly fly in acro mode these days. I use angle mode for a quick line of sight check on my first flight for the day. To be honest, I haven't used horizon mode for a very long time. The other thing that I like to do is put a small piece of heat shrink on the main switches that I use so that I can quickly feel where they are when I've got my goggles on. Obviously with the goggles on you're pretty blind so you need to be able to feel exactly where everything is very quickly. If you're using a receiver with data telemetry like the FR Sky X4R you can display various values from the flight controller on the Tyrannus. Before setting up any of this, you'll need to discover those sensors. Depending on how you've wired the receiver to the flight controller determines what data you can display. If you're using an OSD on the quad, which is for me most of the time, I don't bother using the battery voltage telemetry and I just use the signal strength indicator, the RSSI. The problem with the voltage values is the latency. It can be quite slow to update and it needs quite a lot of careful calibration to be of any real use. Once you've discovered the sensors they will be available on the Tyrannus as input values. If you can't find them you've probably forgotten to go through the discover sensor sequence. Let's see how we do that. Make sure that you've got your model selected in the menu. You'll need a quad with a receiver and a battery. This is the X4R receiver just in a piece of heat shrink. We'll just turn that on. Telemetry recovered. Great, that's all on. So with the model selected here, just long press the page key to actually take you back to page 12. This is the telemetry page on the Tyrannus. And if you scroll down here, you'll see that I've already been through this process once before, and I've already enabled some of these sensor values coming back from the receiver. But to discover new sensors for the first time or to update it, just scroll down here with the minus key, discover new sensors, hit enter, 
and it will sit there filling out these values as it finds them. You can hit enter again to stop discovery and as you can see I've got a number of sensors here the only one I'm really interested in is the signal strength indicator the RSSI which is currently at about 80 to 85 dB it's also sending back the receiver battery voltage we're not going to be using that either the on-screen display the OSD will generally show you the state of the battery volts and current so having a flight timer seems a bit of a waste of time but actually it's a good safety net and warning to hear a timer countdown. You can choose to ignore it if you know from the OSD that you've got enough flight time left. Setting up a timer is actually pretty straightforward. From the menu, make sure you've got the model selected, the GT200 in this case, hit the page key and that takes you to page two which is the model setup page. As you can hear, see here it's got GT200. Use the minus key to scroll down to timer 1 and hit enter. Hit enter again to select how you want the timer to work. Currently it's off. If you hit the plus key we can turn it on, which is great, it just means you've got a countdown timer. But actually you want something a little bit more clever than that. THS simply means that the countdown timer will start counting when the throttle is on. When the throttle's back the timer stops. That's pretty good but actually there's a better setting which is throttle percentage. Throttle percentage simply means that if I'm on full throttle it'll be counting down in real time. If I've got it 50% of the way then it will be counting at half that speed. So it's actually a good representation of the throttle setting on the battery itself. So we're going to use throttle percent. Hit enter to select that. Move across to the value here. Now the countdown time is very much dependent on your quad and what battery you're using. But generally I find with a 4S LiPo on one of the quads like the GT2, four minutes is a good setting. As a warning anyway. Hit enter and then we can scroll this value up to four minutes. Simple as that. Hit exit and that value selected. Hit exit again and we can scroll down to minute call. I like the four minute timer just to tell me every minute when it's expired. So if we turn minute call on by hitting the enter key in this case what will happen is it will let me know when I get to three minutes, two minutes, one minute, etc. But it will only do that if the countdown is not set to silent, which it is at the moment. So we hit enter, we could have beeps, but I'm going to choose voice. It will actually use one of the voice settings on the Tyrannis voice pack to actually tell me what the actual current state of the timer is. Hit exit and that's all set up and ready to go. So here we are, we've got our four minute countdown timer set. It's not counting down at the moment because the throttle is all the way down. But if I actually crank this up, you can see now it's started to count down. If I put that halfway, it counts down at about 50% real time, which I think is a pretty good setting. So let's leave that on and uh, we'll see what happens as it reaches three minutes, two minutes and then counts down to zero. Okay, so there you can see how you get the feedback using the voice output from the Tyrannis. As I said before, you can choose to ignore it 
and it's just there as a reminder of how long you've been flying. Although the timer will speak the value for the minute calls and the final 10 seconds countdown, it's useful to have a switch that you can just flick that will tell you the current value when you, whenever you want it. I like to use the momentary switch SH for doing this. Let's see how we set that up. With the model selected in the menu, long press page to take you to page 12, long press page again and again, and this takes you to page 10, which are the special functions. We've got no special functions set up at the moment, so we just hit enter, takes us here, hit enter again, and we want to activate this when a switch is set. So you could scroll through this using these, but it's easier just to flick the switch, and it's automatically selected switch SH up. Okay, hit enter, hit minus to go over to what the function you actually want to trigger at when you flick that switch. Hit enter and what we want to do is read out a value in this case the countdown timer so if we scroll up here we can play a sound we can play a track or we can play a value which is what you want. Hit enter scroll across to the next column. What value do we want to actually play? We actually want to play the current value of the countdown timer. So hit enter and you can scroll up with the plus key until you find timer one, which is the one that we're using for our countdown timer. It's in here somewhere. There we go, timer one. Hit exit, that's now set up. If we go back to our main screen, the countdown timer is sitting at four minutes. It's not counting down because the throttle is actually at its minimum setting. If I flick this switch now, four point zero. it's reading out from the audio the current value of the countdown timer. If we put some throttle on, you can see now this is starting to count down. So if I'm flying around and I can't quite remember what the value that was last read out by the Tyrannis for the countdown timer, I can just flick this switch. 3.0 and 44.2. Yeah, really useful. So we've already set up the sensors so that we've got the RSSI value on the Tyrannis. So why don't we actually get the switch to play out that value as well? That way, when we flick the switch, we know what the current countdown time setting is and the RSSI value. It's just useful information. So to set that up, go to the menu, long press page to go back to page 12, long press, long press, and this is bringing us to the special functions page, which is page 10. To create a new special function to play the RSSI value, we just scroll down to a free slot, hit enter, and then hit enter again. 3.0 and 30.2. Okay, so that's flicked that switch, and that's playing out the value of the current countdown timer. We're going to change that so that it plays out the value of the RSSI signal as well. So scroll to this column here. This column says what function you want that switch to actually do. Hit enter and we'll scroll up. We want this to play another value and the value we want it to play is the RSSI. So play value by hitting plus, enter, scroll across here. Now, as we saw before, you can scroll up and down these and there's lots of inputs that you can choose. Problem is, it takes ages. So a quick way of doing this is to long press the enter key and that will bring up the categories of input that you can actually select from. 
So if we scroll down here, we've got inputs, we've got sticks, pots, and so on. But what we want is a value from the telemetry group, in this case, RSSI. So we select that, and there's a few values in here. We scroll up. What we want is RSSI. That's selected, we can press escape, and that's now set up. Now, there is a bug, if we escape out of that, go back to this screen, we can see that the current value of RSSI is 85, 85 dB. Now, there is a bug in the Tyrannus which thinks that this is minutes, not dB. So, what's going to happen now is when I flick the switch, 3.0 and 30.285 minutes. So, what it's doing is reading the current value of the timer, which is 3 minutes and 30 seconds. 3. 0.0 and 30.285 minutes and it's reading out the RSSI value but it's using the the incorrect units it thinks it's minutes I haven't found a workaround for this I just accept it so there we go we've got a nice useful switch that whilst we're flying and we can't quite remember what we've got 3 Point zero and thirty point two eighty five minutes. So I know that I've actually got three minutes and thirty seconds left and that my transmitter receiver strength is actually pretty good. Now it's great having the flight timer, but the problem is when do you reset it? Ideally it should be automatically reset every time you change the battery on your quad. Because that's what you're actually trying to time, it's the battery use. There's a few ways you can do this and you'll find some great videos on YouTube with various suggestions but actually none of them really work that well for me. One idea is to use the arm disarm switch to reset the flight timer. Unfortunately this doesn't really work for me. I may disarm the quad because I land early or I crash um, before the battery actually needs changing so the timer will be reset when it doesn't really need to be. Another suggestion involves using the RSSI. It's possible to create a logical switch on the Tyrannus that's triggered when the RSSI value is zero and the quad disarm switch is set to disarm. That would be a great indication that the battery is being changed, provided you leave the transmitter on while you change the battery, obviously. Unfortunately, this solution doesn't work either. Recent Tyrannus firmware versions remember the last value of the telemetry data when the telemetry signal's lost. So when you unplug the battery from your quad, the telemetry signal back on the Tyrannus may say 85 dB. When you disconnect it, it doesn't drop to zero. It just simply remembers the last value. So that means that the RSI signal will never be zero and the logical switch will never trigger. So if anybody knows a workaround for that, let me know. We've talked about logical switches. What's a logical switch? It's simply a soft or a virtual switch on the Tyrannus that you can configure to operate when certain conditions are met. For example, this is a hardware switch. When I flick it, it tells me that I'm going to arm or disarm the quadcopter. A logical switch could be more complex. It can set up something which says, when I've got this condition and this condition and this condition, then the switch is triggered. Logical switches and custom scripts are actually incredibly powerful features within OpenTX, which is what the Tyrannus actually runs. Someday I'll do a video on this. So another way of resetting the countdown timer manually is to choose one of the switches. Unfortunately, all the other switches on the Tyrannus are positional switches, they're toggle switches. What I'd like to do is use the momentary switch, which is switch SH, 4.085 minutes, to reset the timer nice and fast. Unfortunately, as you can see, we've already used switch SH to read back the telemetry values and the current value of the countdown timer. But there's a way of doing this which makes it nice and easy to use. What I'm going to do is make it so that when I flick the switch, minutes. it does what it does at the moment, it reads back those values. 
But what I'm going to do is make it so when I... 4.085 Hold minutes. it for about two seconds and let it go, it will actually reset the countdown timer. To do this, we're going to use a logical switch. Go to the menu, long press page, to go back to page 9. Page 9 is a list of logical switches. Logical switch 1, press enter, which is the first free one, and press enter again. And what we're going to do is say that when the value of this switch is greater or less than a certain amount, do something. So what we're going to do is pick, let's do this, okay, so we're going to pick a log logical switch condition which is saying that A is greater than X. You'll see what that means in a minute. So what I'm going to do is hit enter again. This is, the, this is uh, some input that you're setting. And 4.085 minutes. I'm using switch SH. So what we're going to do is say when A, which is switch SH, is greater than a certain value, do something. So what is that value? Well, I know that the output value of this switch, if it's greater than 50, then it means it's actually in this up position here, this sort of back position. There we go, hit enter. So if you look very carefully, when I flick the switch, you can, you can see that where it's got the label logical switch L1, it goes into bold to show you that that's actually being triggered. There it's gone off. 4.085 minutes. 4.085 minutes. But the problem is we don't want this logical switch 1 to actually trigger straight away. What we want to do is hold it and then after a couple of seconds we want it to actually trigger. And the way you can do that is to scroll across to the AND position on here. Keep scrolling, past duration, and the third column is delay. If you press that and take that up to two minutes, and press escape, what that means is, is we've set up this logical switch called L1 to say that when switch SH has a value of 50 or more and it's been held for two seconds or more then the switch will operate. So let's see that happening. 4.085 minutes. So at the moment all that's happening is 4.085 minutes. It's just reading back the values because that's how we previously set up that switch as a logical as a uh, special function. Um, but you can see that switch L1 is not being triggered. But watch what happens when I hold it. 4.085 minutes. After about two seconds, the L1 goes bold to tell me that that's actually triggered. So we can use that now in a special function. So if we single press the page switch to go back to special functions here. Special function 3 is available. Hit enter. And what we're going to do is say that when logical switch 1 has triggered, we're going to do something. So that's selected. Long press. Enter to bring up the categories of switches. We'll go down to logical switches. L1 was the first one, so it's selected. So we can press enter or escape. Doesn't really matter. Oh, sorry, it does matter. Press enter, scroll across here. Now what do we want it to do? What we want it to do is to reset the timer. So press enter. Here we go. We select reset. Enter. Timer 1, 
yeah that's what we wanted to reset the important thing not to forget is to check that checkbox otherwise it won't be enabled so let's see this working we've currently got the countdown timer sitting at 3 minutes 47 if I flick the switch it will read back that value and the current value of the RSSI telemetry. 3.0 and 47.2, 85 minutes. Confusingly, it says 85 minutes. It should say 85 dB, but there we go. If we then flick this switch and hold it for more than two seconds, it will reset this timer for us. 3.0 and 47.2, 85 minutes. There we go, it's down at 4 minutes, so if I flick... 4.085 minutes. There we go. We've already set up the Tyrannus to play audio for the countdown timer and the RSSI values, which is very useful feedback when you've got your goggles on. Sometimes it's helpful to play an audio track to let you know when the quad is armed and disarmed and what flight mode you're in. You'll probably see these switch settings in the goggles on your OSD, so why bother with this? For me, it's mainly a simple safety check when I turn the Tyrannis on, so it shouts out the current switch settings. That way, I know that the arm switch isn't accidentally armed, and the quad's not going to bite me when I plug the battery in. So the first thing we'll do is set up the Tyrannis to speak the current state of the arm and the disarm switch. Very simple. Model selected, go to menu, long press page, to page 12, long press page, custom scripts, long press page, to take you to the special functions page, this is page 10. And scroll down to the first free special function that's available, hit enter to select it. So what we want to do is to do something when this switch is in a certain position. So we hit enter and we want to shout out when the quad is armed. So it's already selected switch SC, down, enter, minus, and what we want to do is, in this case, we don't want to play a value, what we want to do is play a track. Here we go, play track. Enter, scroll across to the next column, hit enter, and then this is going to give us a list of all the tracks that are available on here. They're rather obscure names, I think these are just eight character names. And you'll need to just play with them to find out which ones they are. I know that armed is the one I want. Armed. There we go. So every time... Armed. I flick the switch down, it goes to armed. But we'd also like something that says disarmed. So escape out of that, go down to the, the next special function that's available, hit enter, hit enter again. Armed. We want it to be when the switch is up, armed. so just move it into that position, which is switch SC up, enter, go across to what we want it to do, hit enter. We're going to play a track. And what we're going to select is disarmed. You can have fun playing with all these. Disarmed. Exit. So now we've got armed. Disarmed. So yeah. let's do the same thing for the flight mode switch. If you remember, I use switch SE, the three position toggle switch. That position is angle mode, that's horizon mode, and that's acro. Go to the menu, long press page, long press page, long press page to bring you to the special functions page. Go down to special function 6, which is our next available one, hit enter, and we are going to hit enter again. The switch position we want is switch SC all the way back. Just flick it around until it's in the back position SC up in that case enter we're going to again play a track there we go play track enter 
the track we're going to play is flight mode angle scroll down here there we go FM ang they may be known differently on your Tyrannus it depends on what voice pack you've got installed enter oops exit rather to do that so flight mode angle flight mode angle so whenever I put the switch in the back position it will say flight mode angle so let's do the same for horizon and acro enter enter switch SF in the middle enter minus going to play a track uh, the track we're going to play is flight mode horizon haven't used horizon mode for a very long time there we go and we'll do the same for angle FM angle I think is the track name oh, sorry flight mode acro there we go just keep pressing escape till you get back to the main page so if we flick this switch around now flight mode angle flight mode horizon flight mode acro armed disarmed flight mode angle there we go all pretty straightforward playing these audio warnings and values is helpful but it can be actually really annoying if you're flying in a group other people may not like it so what we can do is set up one of these rotary switches to be a volume control on the menu long press page three times to take you back to the special functions page which is page 10 scroll down to the next free slot next free special function which is 9 hit enter and we then need to hit enter again now a slight quirk of setting up the volume control is that all these special functions need to be attached to a real switch it doesn't matter which switch you use for this it can be one that's already being used it can be an unused one I'm just going to use switch SD makes no difference it's just a quirk of open TX so that is selected Press enter so what we want this special func function to do is change the volume so hit enter and if you scroll up here you'll find volume is in there press enter to select it scroll across to the next column and if you select it and just turn that knob it will automatically switch select switch s1 which is great press enter and check it to make sure that it's actually selected so as you turn this now you can hear it so if i put it in the middle position armed disarmed armed disarmed almost silent disarmed. Armed. Disarmed. Armed. Disarmed. so there we go that's a very quick way to set up the volume control so you don't annoy your fellow flyers well I hope you found that useful and it's given you some ideas about how you can set up your own Tyrannus remember these are my personal preferences that I built up over a period of time they just suit me as always, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.